Hi, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of On the Mic with Dr. Ace, the Global Mentor Coach, and you're listening to Business Basics. This podcast is dedicated to helping you grow your business, and today I'm going to help you turn a hobby into a business. Uh, Many people have hobbies they can legitimately turn into a business, but they don't know how or where to start. So first off, you've got to look at your hobby. This may sound simple, but this podcast is called Business Basics. You've got to look at your hobby. What is it? Is it marketable? Is it desirable to others? And when we talk about others, we're talking about the general public. We're not talking about your family, your friends. Um, Yes, it's great to get their input, but sometimes they can be a bit biased. It just really depends on your relationship with them. But, you know, we're typically talking about the general public. So you need to find out how people, uh, other people feel about your product or service. Okay? Get genuine, honest feedback. Uh, Too often people think that they've got something great and in their mind they're like, who, why, why wouldn't people want this? This is fantastic. Everybody should want this. And listen, to an extent, yes, it's great to think positively. It's great to be excited about your product because nobody else should be more product, more excited about your product than you. Uh, but the reality is everyone's not going to feel the same way about it. Okay. Uh, there are niche markets and you just need to find out how viable your product or service is in a niche. Can you create a niche? Can you create and sustain the demand? Gotta think about that, okay? Secondly, can you sell enough of your product or service to turn a real profit? If all you're doing is breaking even, keep your hobby as a hobby. Because it says one of two things, either you're not serious enough about turning your hobby into a business or you don't have the business savvy to make it as a business owner. And that's not a stab. That's not a bad thing. It's just being honest. It's just putting it out there. Some people are really good at creating, but they don't have a head for business. If if that's you and you still want a business, you need to find someone who you can partner with that's good at the business side. So all you do is create. Happens all the time. People do partnerships all the time. But too many people start a business and don't really understand the fundamentals of business or realize how much effort it takes to start, run, and grow a business. It's not like a hobby. Hobby is just something, oh, I can just do this every now and then. Listen, I make jewelry. I'm not, these pieces I, I didn't make. But I've got some pieces over here, but I, I can go months without making a piece. That's a hobby. If that was a legitimate business, I have to make, I would have to literally be in here sewing, making pieces almost every day. Why? First of all, I don't make simple pieces that I can be done in five or 10 minutes. My pieces take about, you know, anywhere from an hour and a half to 15 hours. And so if I want to legitimately turn my hobby and I'm going to, I'm going to, for those of you who are watching my broadcast. I'm going to show you a piece. I'm about to deconstruct this piece because this is another part of your business you've got to think about. Hobby, you know, I do prototypes. This is a prototype. This is the fourth time I've worked on this piece. So that's materials, mostly thread, and thread is not cheap. Um, And this is a bracelet, by the way, for those of you who are not watching. um, This is a bracelet. And um, I couldn't get it right. And it hasn't been right. And I'm not going to, I'm going to keep practicing this until I get it right. Uh, Only because for some reason I got the base right, but I can't get the embellishment piece right. And I'm trying to figure out why. I think I know why, but um, that's, that's part of it. But sometimes when you've got to keep doing a piece over and over again, you get frustrated. It's like, ah, 
I don't want to be bothered with it because I'm not taking a step apart for the fourth or fifth time. Um, this is a necklace. This is a choker that I did. I got inspiration from this actually in a store. And I was like, oh, I can make that. And I did. And I made it better. I'll probably make an anklet to match and a bracelet. But um, this is a hobby because it's not something I do every day, all the time. But I also understand that it's time consuming because again, I don't do pieces that are like five and ten, five or ten minutes, bangles, quick and and just and and done. I don't make pieces like that. My pace, my pieces literally take a long time. That bracelet takes eight hours of beading. Four hours for part one, four hours for part two. I have a necklace that takes 15 hours, five hours for the base, 10 hours to embellish it. So when you start talking about turning a hobby into a business, there's a reason why this is still a hobby for me. Because to turn it into a full-on business, I've got to really start looking at now, how many pieces do I want to sell per month? How much time would I have to dedicate to being able to turn out those pieces? How am I going to sell them? Where am I selling them? Where is my market? How am I going to present my pieces to that market? And do I have time to do that? These are things you've got to think about. Okay, so while you're thinking about your business, you've got to think about your marketing strategy. How much money are you going to invest in your marketing strategy? Not just your materials, your base, your concepts, and all that other stuff. If you're a writer, because I'm also a writer, what are you investing in marketing and how you're going to market your book? Publishing, are you going to self-publish? Are you going to traditional publish? Still going to cost you money because you got to find somebody to do your book covers and book because that's what sells books and because that's what makes people want to actually get into the story. So yeah, so um, what's your strategy going to be? Are you relying 100% on social media? Is this an e-business where you're only selling online? Who are your competitors? What are they doing? How successful are your competitors? How can you be better than them? What are their gaps? What are the opportunities in the market? See, these are just a few of the questions you really have to consider if you want to turn your hobby into a business. I met a woman uh, on my trip to Jamaica and she was like, I, you know, she, she decorates and, and does things for like baby showers and all this other stuff. And she's into screen printing and, you know, she has a cricket and all that stuff. And she was just like, I don't have time to turn this into a business. So it's a hobby of mine because I don't have time to turn it into a business. This is someone who knows what it means to do it. She said, because first of all, I'm a perfectionist. I like things a certain way. It's gotta be this, it's gotta be that, da 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 She was like, so this is something that, she was like, no, she said, I make stuff and people are like, ooh, can I buy it? How much is it? She was like, nope, I'm not trying to get, in, get caught up into that because I don't have the time and I don't want to be bothered. That's honesty and I love it. So now the market is not saturated with someone else who's really just working a hobby instead of a business. Because you got to think about packaging. That's part of your marketing. How are you going to promote it? Pricing, placement, people, production, all of that. So, you know, once you thought about all of that, you know, you work through that and now you have a viable product or service and you know you can turn it into a real profit, you need to be a legitimate business. Go to your state's revenue page um, and find out what you need to do to start a business or just kind of Google start a business in, you know, whatever state you're in. At the top of almost every checklist, I don't care whose checklist, at the top of almost every checklist is going to be this one item, call IRS to apply for an EIN. 
An EIN is an employer identification number. You cannot start a business in your state without it because it's, it's, the EIN is a requirement for every business. Every state I know, if you want to register your company as a business, whether you, it, uh, I, I don't care if it's a sole proprietor, an LLC, S Corp, whatever you want to do, you need an EIN number. And if you don't have it, they're going to turn you right back around and tell you to call IRS and get an employer identification number. You need that. It gets real when you got to call IRS. Yeah. Follow the checklist. It's real simple. Follow the checklist. It's important for you to be a legitimate business. People get out here and they start selling under the table. Folks are all on Instagram. They're everywhere. They're selling. They don't pay taxes. They don't have a business license. They're not approved to do business. Then they get caught and now they're in a world of trouble. Don't be like one of those people. Don't be those people. Because I'm telling you now, I know people who have been selling stuff. People have been selling alcohol and food and all this other kind of stuff on Instagram and they are getting arrested. They're getting busted. All these people over here selling crafts, craft products and all that kind of stuff. Yes, there are cottage laws that you can sell under, but you still need to be a legitimate business. Maybe all you're doing is a DBA operation, operating as a fictitious business. And so you don't need all of that other stuff and LLC and all that. You just want to operate as a fictitious business. You still need, you still need to do that and follow your state's requirement. But they're setting stuff up, you see it, and oh, I'll invoice you, I'll send you an invoice, cash at me, zelle me, transfer it, I'll send you a PayPal invoice, all kinds of stuff. Don't be one of those people. If you're going to be in business, do it the right way. If not, Keep your hobby a hobby. That's all I've got for you this week. Thanks for listening to me, Dr. Ace, the Global Mentor and Book Coach. You've been on the mic with me. And this has been another episode of Business Basics. If you like this podcast, make sure you like it, you share it. Um, I really, uh, really, really, really appreciate your support. You can listen to it on iTunes. Uh, you can listen to it on Spotify. I think Google Podcast has it. Or you can listen to it right here on Anchor FM. If you have some topics you want, want me to cover, or if you need a business coach, email me at info at globalmentorcoach.com. Again, you can email me at info at globalmentorcoach.com if you need a business coach or if you've got some topics you want me to cover here on the podcast. So again, thanks for tuning in with me.